Uh, let's now turn to the last uh, speaker, um, uh, Francis from, uh, from the Asset. Um, uh, would you like to uh, make your presentation? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, as you can tell, I'm an agriculture economist, uh, doing more uh, the work on agriculture and sort of value chain. Uh, but uh, when Dirk asked me to sort of talk a bit about the work that we do at Assets, I thought about it to be uh, 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 appropriate to sort of give a preview of um, this uh, report that we're working on. Uh, I've brought a few copies of it. Uh, I think they're posted outside. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I only brought about 10 or 11 of them, so sorry about that. Uh, but I encourage you to sort of visit our website to learn more about uh, this uh, in a sort of upcoming report and some of the background papers that are used to uh, sort of put it together. Um, so, can I go on this? You leave the yes. wand. There you go. Thank you. Um, so, uh, I guess uh, Nick Lee earlier sort of did a great job sort of uh, giving sort of an uh, interesting background behind this uh, talk that has been going around about the rise of Africa. You know, this uh, story about growth, growth, growth happening in the continent and the continent being sort of the fastest growing uh, sort of region in the world. And uh, so I'm not going to really give much about it. But sort of the story be that we're trying to portray is that uh, this growth is happening, but transformation obviously is not. Mm -hmm. And to answer to the first question that uh, Dirk sort of brought, brought up, you know, which is what is transformation, uh, at Assets we define transformation as being growth plus death. Uh, sort of this idea of, of a deeper growth. Um, so by D, we mean sort of a diversification of the products or sort of a commodi commodities that a country produces. Uh, export competitiveness, we mean that uh, a country produces or exports at sort of um, a, uh, a, a, a competitive cost. Uh, productivity, uh, of course, producing more at lower cost. Uh, technology upgrading in the in sort of uh, in the industry and obviously sort of there's an element of well-being uh, toward the end I will define what uh, we mean by each one of them but uh, just to talk but for now we'll a bit talk about sort of what will be in the report and then of course uh, in that process as well give a sort of a answer to some of the questions that Dirk uh, brought up uh, so the ATR report um, Obviously, it will be a review of transformation performance using the uh, elements that I've just defined earlier in the previous slide. Uh, and in it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually uh, estimate a transformation index, uh, which I will also explain uh, what are the, uh, the variables that are going into sort of uh, building that, uh, that index. And uh, we're also uh, uh, discussing some of the, the drivers, what we believe are the drivers of transformation. Uh, I will discuss about three of them here, which are featured in the report. Uh, and the other ones will be featured on the next report. And also, we uh, we've did, uh, a, we, 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 and then we talked about, you know, to the question of how it happens, we talked about the pathways to uh, uh, Africa's transformation. So uh, the, the report was actually uh, um, uh, influenced, or I guess informed by case studies that we uh, did in collaboration with about 15 think tanks in the continent in about 15 countries, which are listed over there. I guess these countries represent about 80% of the GDP in Southern Africa. And what they did, uh, sort of, we, the, these uh, think tanks give us an idea about stories uh, and how some of the elements that we uh, had designed, des designated to sort of give us indication of trans economic transformation to how it is happening in their countries for us to have underground understanding of uh, sort of uh, the uh, evidence of economic transformation. Uh, in terms of the drivers, obviously, uh, of course, uh, at the forefront there is this idea of state capacity, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, highly discussed in the report. Uh, we have business, the business environment, uh, the domestic savings and investment, public infrastructure, <coughs> education and skills, technology upgrading, foreign direct investment, labor, uh, labor and um, industry uh, relations, uh, targeted sectorial um, uh, strategies, and export promotion. But of course, uh, in this report, we only focus on three, obviously because of uh, the limitation in the page that we were aiming to reach. Uh, and I will discuss about them, just I'll give an, a brief overview of, over them today. Uh, so in terms of the states, what we, uh, in the report we talk about the new roles of, of the states in this idea of transformation. Uh, we talk about a state moving from the typical sort of uh, 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 low, law and order sort of, uh, the, you know, uh, the sort of this institution that provides law and order to one that 
uh, facilitate private sector access to te technology, uh, facilitate private sector access to new markets, and promote economic activity based on comparative advantage, and of course foster sub, uh, some type of public uh, private collaboration. And in it, we've uh, highlighted a few examples, a few case studies. Notably is the one of the Lego states and sort of the new governor of the Lego states in Nigeria who has been very transformati transformative in his uh, policies in that regards of sort of bringing up PPPs in a lot of the, uh, the policies uh, uh, in, in that state. Uh, in terms of export, uh, we discussed uh, sort of uh, how uh, you know, it is imperative for Africa to, uh, uh, to expand its production, uh, of course, which will create jobs and then of course to finance some of the inputs of transformations. Obviously, uh, we're using the examples of Asia, right? And how he has worked there and how we can <coughs> sort of uh, not necessarily mimic the case of Asia, but how can we sort of use it and adapt it to the cases or to sort of the features of African countries. Uh, uh, skill is also a big one. Um, uh, as you probably know, uh, this idea, we, 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 we emphasize a lot on uh, uh, technical and vocational training. Uh, as you probably know, in Africa, this idea of the, uh, vocational training is mostly frowned upon. So uh, it usually, you know, implies that you didn't do a good job going towards sort of the traditional sort of educational system. So we actually, but 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 when you think about it, these are the sort of skills that are highly demanded by the private sector. So we're trying to sort of. Uh, uh, talk about how that can be done, how can uh, sort of uh, the gov governments can promote or I guess make vocational uh, training actually a cool thing as opposed to it being uh, negatively looked up on. Uh, and of course we give a few examples uh, uh, on you know how again Nigeria is doing that, uh, some of the examples in the mining sector as well, uh, some of uh, in, in, in Guinea actually. Uh, Agro-processing, uh, this is actually uh, dear to my heart, uh, that's why uh, I've uh, specifically worked on this. Uh, what we did in this uh, chapter, uh, what we did, we, we've, uh, wor we produce about, this chapter was actually informed by about a series of, uh, of reports. We developed about uh, reports that looked at the value chains of cocoa, coffee, cotton, fruits, soybean, uh, sugar, and, uh, and, um, and vegetables. And what we did, we looked at, uh, the idea was to say, okay, uh, we of course we know that Africa is, has a highly competitive advantage in the production of these products, but obviously not much is being processed locally in the continent. So we've identified some of the low hanging fruits. What are the opportunities for capturing the values? Uh, for example, the cocoa industry is uh, a big one, uh, where you have the African continent producing, I guess capturing 70% of the production of cocoa beans, which is, um, uh, about five, uh, which is a, uh, the cocoa beans being, I think, a five billion dollar industry, but only capturing a portion, a sort of a very negligible portion of sort of the uh, the, 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 the the intermediate uh, products and even the chocolate industry. So what we did in this chapter, we uh, uh, we discussed what can you know government do to lift some of the constraints associated with uh, uh, locally processing this product in the continent. Uh, one big one is um, the oil, gas, and mineral. Uh, of course, again, uh, in this in this industry, the continent has a high comparative advantage. Uh, but again, not much is done. Uh, of course, we talk about the curse. That's sort of a very uh, um, uh, when we talk about Africa and the mineral sector, the word curse always always appear. And uh, what can you know? What can Af you know? We discuss on ways in which uh, African countries uh, go or government can do to lift some of the constraints associated with, or that sort of a, a contribute to this quote-unquote curse that uh, it's experiencing. And of what one, of course, uh, post-child uh, post-child example is the the, the 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 Botswana, and the work that he has done with the beer uh, in that country. You know, recently. Uh, you know, especially the, the sort of the, uh, the most recent uh, sort of development. And we happen to be fortunate to have the former uh, CEO of the Beer Botswana working at Assets, sort of who gives us sort of some of the insight on how this has been done, so. Uh, tourism is also a good one. Um, again, uh, there's a lot of opportunities in the continents that the country can, I mean, that the continent can leverage up on. Uh, we focus on some of examples, some of the case studies we talked about on the ecotourism in West Africa and how can that be leveraged as well. Right. 
and light manufacturing as well. Uh, a big case study is the one of shoe manufacturing in, in, in Ethiopia. Uh, I, I, I believe that Maggie sort of uh, briefly mentioned that in her presentation as well. Again, uh, 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 you know, Africa is highly, it's uh, well positioned given the high cost of labor in, in Asia. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the, the growing cost of labor in Asia. And we believe that Africa is uh, well positioned to sort of capture some of the, uh, the, the manufacturing opportunities for light manufacturing, given that the low uh, Africa still has relatively low wage compared to uh, uh, many parts of the world. But obviously, the co some other uh, cost of productions are there. Of course, electricity is a big one. Uh, so we discuss on how, um, what can government do to address some of these areas and sort of make the business or I guess the manufacturing environment more conducive to attracting uh, some of even the Chinese manufacturing in, in the continent. Uh, so um, what we did, again, uh, we, we, we tried to measure uh, and track transformation. And we tried to look at how countries, African countries, fare in terms of uh, some of the variables of transformation. And we compare them with what we call comparators countries. Countries that, uh, back in the 1960s or so, were at a similar sort of uh, uh, level as African. We're talking about the South Korea, we're talking about the Singapore, and so on and so forth. That, back in the 1960s, were at the same level as Africa. And, but, you know, of course, uh, that took off. So we're comparing Africa, some of the, ver the elements of transformation to those countries to see what, where Africa is and how, of course, Africa can catch up. And uh, so now back to the index. Um, what we're doing, like I said, uh, transformation for us is growth plus death. Okay, so of course we know what growth is. Uh, we know what's, uh, what it is made out of. But death, uh, w again, uh, economic diversification. We're measuring um, uh, production sector diversification. Uh, of course, the share of manufacturing value added in GDP. Uh, export commodity diversification, right? Uh, export sector diversification. That's sort of, these are some of the elements that we're using to measure diversification. For export competitiveness, we're simply looking at the country's share of world exports of goods and services divided by the country's share of world GDP. Um, for productivity, we're measuring on, we're focusing on two elements. Obviously, the manufacturing productivity, which is uh, MVA per manufacturing worker, and uh, agricultural productivity. We focus on cereal yield because cereal cut across, uh, you know, it's easy to compare cereal across countries as opposed to, uh, you know, just looking at agricultural GDP or uh, value added, which is, which, which uh, in reality, we don't really know how it's really measured. Uh, agricultural yield, I mean, cereal yield is really easy to, it's really easy to measure. So we sort of uh, used it to as a sort of uh, as a um, um, uh, as a proxy for uh, agricultural productivity. Uh, for technology, um, we looked at the share of medium to high tec uh, technology products in manufacturing value added. Uh, that, that's production, and of course, on the export level, on the, at the, on the e export side, we looked at the share of medium and high technology product in exports. And of course, the human well-being, which is an interesting one, uh, we, we, fo we focus on, of course, of GDP per capita, but obviously that's not sufficient. So we, we focus, we looked at uh, the ratio of formal sector employment to labor force. In other words, the, the percentage of, of people who are employed in formal Productive work. Okay, so that's sort of uh, sort of this uh, element of human well-being that we're trying to capture, and of course there is a, a, a gender element of it where we're looking at uh, maternal survival rate, and uh, and of course uh, child survival rate. Um, so we you just the we have we're still putting the data together, uh, sort of compiling the the, the index, so you should. Uh, here from from us by, uh, by January 2014. The report should be out. But of course, I invite you to w visit our website where some of the background papers are used to for this report are already posted. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. Um,